I've entitled this morning's sermon, Mindful of the Things of God, Mindful of the Things of God. I'm in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 23, and then also Romans chapter 9, verse 33. If you're able, please stand for the reading of the word. Matthew 16, 13 through 23. And the scripture reads, I'm in a New American Standard Bible. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of the heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be, have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised on the third day. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but on man's. Romans 9. Verse 33, New American Standard Bible again, it reads, Just as it is written, Jesus speaking, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not, what? Be disappointed. Please be seated. So I wonder this morning, who do you say that Jesus is? He is he's the son of the living God, Amen. People from all around believed, believed that Jesus might be Elijah returned, John the Baptist raised from the dead, Jeremiah, one of the prophets of old. Even to this day, some religious sects believe that Jesus was just a quote-unquote teacher. But the church is built upon this and this alone, and that is the confession that Jesus is what? The Christ of God. He is the Son of God of the living God. No one, no one can come into the kingdom of heaven apart from that. Do you believe that? Amen. You, you have to come to this point in life and accept the fact, you personally have to accept the fact that Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. And when you make that confession with your mouth, you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, and the scripture says what? And so you are saved. saved. Salvation comes from this moment. There is no other foundation upon which man can be saved. Apart from him, there is no salvation. Souls continue to be added to the church as a result of the personal revelation of Jesus as the Christ and the Son of the living God. It's believed in their heart, it's confessed with their mouth, and so they are saved. That's what the Word says. Romans 10, 8 through 10, New American Standard Bible. But what does it say? The Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus says what? Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? Saved. Saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth, confession resulting in salvation. That's how it happened. In the moment of this, Jesus turns to Peter, because he's the one who made the first confession, right? Right? He made the first confession, and he declares that he's blessed because flesh and blood did not reveal this to him, but his Father in heaven. If we need anything in this world right now, that's what we need more than anything, is that men and women and people within this world, that God would begin to give them a revelation that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God, and apart from him, there is no salvation. Born again. Brought into a right relationship with the Lord. Amen? And just as much, I believe this with all of my heart, just as much as the Lord is present in the birth of every child, as he breathes the breath of life into them, when they take that first breath, so is he present when he opens up the heart to the revelation 
that Jesus is his son, and that he is the Christ, and that alone and through him and the, what he provided at Calvary for us, the forgiveness of sins, the very salvation of your souls. In that moment, the Lord is there as well. Do you agree with that? You would think that on the heels of this moment that Peter's all pumped up. You would be. You just received a blessing from the Lord. You just confessed something that was absolutely true and knew it was from where? From God. And he is all pumped up in himself. And so Jesus, is, he's, he's all wrapped up in this, that, yeah, I'm the Christ. And then he begins to explain to his disciples exactly what was going to happen, that he was headed where? To Jerusalem. And that he was going to be persecuted and beaten and flogged. And that the scribes and the chief priests and, 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 and all the people involved in the Sanhedrin were going to rise up against him and they were going to cry out for his death. And he was going to be crucified. And he was going to be put upon the cross and buried. And then what? Risen from the dead. And Peter, in his awesome wisdom, what does he do? He grabs the Lord, literally. He grabs the Lord, takes him off to the side and begins to tell him, Lord, this is never going to happen to you. I'm never going to let this happen to you. And what does Jesus say to him? Get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because you do not have in mind the things of God, but the things, you're not interested in the interest of God. You're interested in the things of, of men. I would tell you this morning, Saint, you need to be mindful of the things of God and what his plans are. It's going to happen. What Jesus told Peter is going to happen. You know why? Because Jesus said so. <laughs> he, he, knew, he knew what his father's plan was for his life. He was the Christ. He was designed to come and be sacrificed. That's why he came upon this earth. Yes, to teach us everything about God, yes. But then also to be providence for us, amen? So that through him we might have forgiveness of sins, salvation. Peter's not mindful of the things of God in this moment. He is mindful of what he wants. So he pulls Jesus off to the side, begins to tell him, far be it from you, Lord, this will never happen to you. And Jesus turns to him and says, go, get away behind me, Satan. You, you're an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. You're an offense to me. I, had to, I was digging into that word. What's it mean to be an offense to the Lord? Well, let me tell you. In the Greek, the word is scandalon. You know what word we get from this? English? It's scandals. That's, that's, where we get, that's where we get our word scandal from. But in this specific case, a scandalon described the part of a trap the bait was attached to. That's what it actually meant. It became to be a word to describe a stumbling block. Anything that arouses prejudice. Listen to this. Anything that arouses prejudice, uh, prejudice or becomes a hindrance to others and causes them to fall out of the way. Peter has gotten into the way of Jesus and the will of his father for his life. That's what's happened here in this moment. Remember who just spoke those words. It wasn't anybody. It was Jesus. He spoke those words. You are an offense to me. You're, you're standing in my way. You're, you've become a stumbling block to me. You're trying to keep me out of my father's will. He just got in the way of the Lord. Amen. Jesus has just declared to them all that the will of his father, what the will of the, of the father was for him and for his life. And I say it again, everything the Lord speaks is true and is reality. Is the Lord standing in your way? <laughs> or are you standing in his? I, 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 ha I came to this point in the scripture and I had to, I had to come, a, come into this moment and I said, man, it brings forth the revelation of, of my heart. It shows forth where everyone must come to. Am I standing in the Lord's way and what he wants to accomplish? Or is he standing in my way because I don't want to hear his word and get on board with what he wants? I refuse to accept his words and the words that he speaks into my heart. Why? Because they are an offense to me. I stumble over his word. Amen. I stumble over his word. Are you an offense to him or is he an offense to you? There's no middle ground. Right? 
If, if, if I'm an offense to Jesus, that means what? I'm standing against everything he is. And if he's an offense to me, all the things that he's trying to speak into me, I don't want nothing with. Do you get that? You understand that? Either, either, either I'm trying to make the Lord stumble or he's trying to make me stumble because, well, there is another option, you know. There is another option. Look here. Matthew 11, 2 through 6. Matthew 11, 2 through 6. New American Standard Bible. Now, when John was in prison and heard of the works of Christ, he sent words by his disciples and said to them, Are you the expected one, or shall we look for someone else? And Jesus answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, and lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who does not what? Take offense at me. How would I ever take an offense to the Lord? How would you take an offense to the Lord? Well, it's what the Lord would speak into you, James. And when it comes in, sometimes it brings this thing that we call what? Conviction? Yes. It brings conviction. You have two choices when that conviction comes into your life. You can either accept it or you can walk away from it. Those are your choices. So that's the other part. See, if you get caught up in just the fact, am I an offense to the Lord or is he an offense to me? You're trapped. There's no around it, right? Well, there is a way around it. If you leave that there, you miss the opportunity to align yourself with him. You miss the opportunity to align yourself with him. In other words, accept what he says and then walk with him in it. I must accept his every word and become mindful of the things of God. And I would encourage you to do this. Walk with him and follow him. Accept his word within you. Amen. Salvation itself is one of the things of God. It's just one thing of God. Apart from Christ, going to Jerusalem, being confronted, arrested, mocked, beaten, judged, scourged and arrested, crucified, judged, put on a cross. Apart from that, the providence of sins and forgiveness never happens. It never happens. Peter was standing in the way of that. And he was not mindful of what God had in mind, his plan of salvation for him and for everyone else. Jesus understood that his life wasn't just about who? Peter. Who was it about? Well, everyone in here should just raise both hands. <laughs> it's all about what God has done for all of us. And if Jesus doesn't become the Christ, if he isn't the Christ, if he doesn't come upon this earth, if he doesn't grow through everything that he went through in order to provide for you, you never have the opportunity to be right with God. And you're still in your sins. But that is not what it happened, is it? What Jesus said and told Peter absolutely became the absolute what? Truth and reality. And now we, through that, have the ability to have a right relationship with the Lord. Look at Luke 22, 44 through 48. New American Standard Bible again. Now he said to them, speaking of Jesus, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And that repentance, look, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You, I would say that to you right now. And now you also are witnesses of these things. You agree with that? The acknowledgement of Christ and the acceptance of his word opens the door of opportunity for us to participate in the knowledge and character qualities, the glory, and the very treasure of the kingdom of God as a result of our salvation and being born again. It also opens the opportunity to then share it. Today, you may learn something of several things of God in knowledge only. In other words, what? You came to the book today, you opened up the book, and you read some things about God, and you learned some awesome qualities about God today. I hope you did today. I hope you learned something today. But you know what the Lord wants for us more than anything? 
is to be merciful. So I would say this to you. You, 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 Christian, today, you go out and show one act of mercy to someone today. Just go out and be merciful to someone. Well, Chuck, what is mercy? Well, that's seeing a need and what? And meeting that need. You go out and simply do one act of mercy. See a need and meet a need. And how many, how many portions of the character of, of God have you just participated in? You want to start listing them? Can you help me along? I show mercy to someone. What, what else have I participated in in the glory of God? I show love. Look, why would I ever want to show mercy to someone if I didn't have that? Love. What else? Compassion. I show compassion. Even Jesus had compassion upon people. Remember when he fed the 5,000? It said he had, he had compassion on the people. And then he met that need, didn't he? He showed mercy to him. Anybody else? Care. care. I care. Does the Lord care about you? Amen. How about giving? Giving is a part of that. Kindness? Not being selfish anymore? Faith, I, I, apart, apart from faith, I wouldn't even be able to have the mercy to be able to see somebody's need and then to do it, would I, Miss Linda? So when I begin to actually live out God's word and do what he wants me to do and I show one act of, of mercy to someone, how much of the character of God have you just participated in? And where does it come from? The thing we were talking about before, do you want to see healing in people? Let the Holy Spirit, let the presence of God get inside of them. It will change them forever. I can't fix you, Billy. I can't. I cannot fix you. I know who can, though. I know that his presence can fix you. I need that in my life as well. I'm not exempt. Are any of you exempt from that? No. Apart from that, we have no salvation. Amen? I would encourage you today to be mindful of the things of God. And what God would have for you. As you begin to think about that, what the providence is that, that the Lord provided to his church and everything that he gave. Why? Because you have a living God who's involved with living souls, with the living things of him. And they are all designed to be what? Alive and to breathe life into people. A living God with the living things of him. See, we were, we were studying in Habakkuk this, this last week. And one of the really interesting things that came out of there was, as Habakkuk is seeing this vision of what God has laid before him, he sees these people, and they're, you know what they're doing? They're making idols, and they're beginning to worship idols. You created that idol. And then they, the, the thing that they created, then they begin to what? Worship. worship. God does not worship you. <laughs> That which, that's what, that which is created does not work. You don't worship that. You know what you worship? You worship that which created you. Does it make sense? Do you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? You, you worship him. Well, how do you worship him in your life today? What is your spiritual act of worship? To be a living sacrifice. That's what the scripture teaches us. That we are to be living sacrifices for him. Amen. And as we begin to participate with God, and again, I'll say this, you show one act of mercy. Well, what if you show one act of love? What if you show one act of goodness and faithfulness and kindness? You do one thing like that. The fact that you get involved in someone else's life, a living God involved with you, a living person, and then, to, and, and then in order to impart living things into other people, I want to be a part of that. And you know what? God wants you to be a part of that. In fact, it's a part of him. And it's living inside of you. And it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants to come out. So let it. And be mindful, not of what you want, but what he wants. Does it make sense? Any other thoughts? Any other scriptures? A closed mouth is never fed. <laughs> In order for me to be fed with the Spirit of the Lord, I must open my mouth and spread the gospel. So I can be filled with the gospel. Amen. Be, be mindful of God. Be mindful of the things of Him. Because I promise you this, Saint, He's mindful of you. He's mindful of you. 
You are the apple of his eye, you know. He cares so much about you. He loves you so much. He doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to put you down, put you under his thumb. That's not the objective. You know what his objective is? It's for you and him to be just like this. One. That's what he wants. He wants you to have the same thoughts and the same desires that he has, to be one with him. I would encourage you in that today. Amen? Let's pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we just worship you this morning, Lord. We ask again, Lord, that you would just fill us from our head to our toes with your very presence, your holiness, your glory, all the things that are of you, Father. Just let them well up inside of us and radiate within us, Lord, to this dying world. Father, we're mindful of you this morning and the things of you and what you would have for us to be and what you would have us to do. Lord, as, as, you, as you just approach us in your word, Father, help us to be receptive to what your plan is and to accept it and to do what you've called us to do and what you've called us to be. Just help us to be living beings, even as you are, and alive like you are, Father, and to impart that life to the others in our lives, Father. We worship you in this, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. I, want, I wonder what would have happened if Peter had a, had a just did one more thing. Instead of doing what he did, when he started to begin telling the Lord, this is never going to happen to you, is to say, Lord, this is going to happen to you. What can we do to help you? Lord, what, what can I do as, 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 as one of your fathers? What can I do to help you in this time? I, I wonder. It's just a thought. It's a great thought for you to think today. As you're going home today, think about that. Ask him this. Say, Lord, what can I do for you today? What can I do for you today? Amen? Let's sing one more song. Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender, I surrender. encourage you right now in your heart and your mind 
that you come and you do this, exactly what it's saying. When you're singing, that you actually do that in your heart and mind. That you come before the Lord. You come before the Lord and you surrender your life to Him right now. You give it all over to Him. All the good, all the bad, all that you ever were. Just give it to Him. Amen? Give it to Him. Surrender your life to Him. Take on His presence. Drop to your knees and ask Him for His presence in you. Amen? I need that. Everybody needs that. But it comes out of surrender. Give up to Him. Sing this last verse. Oh, to Jesus I surrender.